I don't know how this is going to go, but we're going to do this. Get your authorized version of the scriptures. Read along with me in the scriptures that we will be looking at today. Read along with me, word for word. Verse by verse, the scriptures we will be reading today. Read along with me, be a Berean. Search the scriptures daily, whether these things be so. Read along with me, keep an eye on me, because my mouth goes quicker than my brain sometimes. Okay. Amos chapter 3 verses 5 on to verse 8 excuse me excuse me Amos chapter 3 verses 3 on to verse 8 beg your pardon that <laughs> I don't know why I wrote that okay can two Two, not spiritual and temporal like what the, the peace sign of Catholicism. Can two walk together except they be agreed? Well, you could walk down the road with someone you don't like, but how can you truly walk together as a unit, as a cohesive unit, unless you be agreed? Unless there be of a like mind. Unless there be a union of sort of spirits there. Will a lion roar in the forest when he hath no prey? Will a young lion cry out of his den if he have taken nothing? Can a bird fall in a snare upon the earth where no gin? is for him and that's not talking about the alcohol either shall one take up a snare from the earth and have taken nothing at all shall a trumpet be blown in the city and the people not be afraid shall there be evil in the city and the Lord hath not done it You read in, uh, I believe it is 1 Kings chapter 22, where the Lord allowed the false prophets to deceive Ahab. Ahab. I sometimes get Ahaz and Ahab mixed up, <laughs> obviously, because it's a one letter difference. But um, you read about that, about how the, how the Lord allowed See, nothing happens without the Lord's consent. Nothing, you're not going to pull the wool over the eyes of the Lord. It's just not going to happen. Okay? It's just not going to happen. So when it says, shall there be evil in a city and the Lord hath not done it, you know, some of the worst things that could happen to mankind is when the Lord's like, okay, have at it. You, you want eye candy? You want all this superficial, artificial unreality? You want that? I, I, can, I can show you different. But remember, what isn't God doing? What isn't Satan doing? There's that old saying. Be careful of what you wish for. You might just get it. You know, going on 16 years old, and looking back in retrospect, beloved, I praise the Lord that he has not allowed some of the things that I asked for to come to pass. Oh, praise the Lord. 
Because see, you're 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 trained. You're it's ingrained into you that if you if you get everything you want, you're gonna be happy, right? Hmm. You gotta really be careful with that. Because like I said, if I looking back, I praise the Lord that He has not granted more than half of what I have asked for in the past. What I have prayed for in the past. I'm glad. I really am. I rejoice. Because if the Lord allowed some of the things that I have prayed for in the past. I know this would make some people happy, but I wouldn't be right here. I wouldn't be here right now. I, granted, I'd be up with him a lot better. But uh, I wouldn't be here right now. Verse 7. Surely, and that's not temple. Surely the Lord God will do nothing. But he revealeth his secret unto his servants, prophets. And today, now see, this is an Old Testament uh, thing. This is another dispensation. Okay, we have the completed, revealed word of God. Okay? And today, how will the Lord reveal truth unto us? Oh, by reading his words, searching the scriptures daily, whether these things be so. Which is why a lot of people, unfortunately, why a lot of saints as well, unfortunately, will be like, okay, I'll put that away for a while. The lion hath roared, will not fear. The Lord God has spoken. Who can but prophesy? And remember, Prophesying under the Old Testament, under the law, which was faith and works, is different than the prophesying that you and I as saints do. Okay? Yes, we prophesy today. But remember, prophesying today in this dispensation is simply a saved man, because the man is the one who's supposed to be doing the preaching and teaching, not a woman, no matter how you want to twist that, Brother Scott, no matter how I've seen some of these, you know, these women, okay, um, man is supposed to be doing the preaching and teaching, especially in a public setting such as YouTube or whatever you're doing, okay? But we prophesy today by the man having the Lord within him. And the Lord with him is guiding that man through the scripture. And the Lord through that man is giving you scripture. That is how we prophesy today. Okay? Alright? But back to verse 3. I wanted that context in there. I wanted that context in there for us. Verse 3. Can two walk together? Can two walk together, except they be agreed? Oh, one, one moment, one moment. Can two walk together except they be agreed? Agreed. Does that mean you make a passive, tentative, little uh, peace treaty? Or is that an agreement of being of like mind? Because how many people are in relationships today where there is a truce, but yet at heart, yet at heart, they're not truly one flesh, one spirit? How many? I mean, look at, look at our society today, okay? The disposable nature of the society today. Have you thought about that? Have you thought about that? In, and see, in Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verses 9 on to verse 12, 
Two are better than one. Yes. Because they have a good reward of their labor. For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him that is alone when he falleth, for he hath not another to help him up. Now, verse 10, okay, verse 10 there, you and I are not alone. You're like, Brad, come on, you're going to... Is, is the scripture lying when he says, I will never, I will look at this later, that I'll never leave thee nor forsake thee? Is, that, is he lying? Of course he's not. But it seems not to really make a difference sometimes, does it? When you are a man, or even a woman sometimes, when this gets to wanting. The Lord, you're saved. The Lord lives within you. The Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, the Holy Ghost, you know, the Lord is that Spirit. One God lives within you. You're not alone. You're saved. You're never alone. But, but, it's like, okay, Brad, you're right. I'm not alone. But, mm, boy, I'm looking around here. I don't see nobody. And they're in. And they're in. Is where Satan. And our own lusts. More so, probably. Come in and do us damage and batter us as if a cat playing with a little mouse toy or something like that. That cannot be denied. That cannot be denied. But also, what if, what if you are in a relationship? Okay? And when I say relationship, remember, we're talking about saints. Okay? It's one thing to have courtship with a woman. Or the man, you know, coming from the male uh, woman perspective. Of course, I'm speaking from the male perspective. It's one thing to be in courtship with a woman. Okay? It is. It is. But what happens when in the supposed bond that is supposed to be there, there's an emptiness there because why the two are not agreed? Because in verse 11... Again, if two lie together, then they have heat. But how can one be warm alone? See, there's a distinction between verses 10 and 11 here. Okay? All right, verse 9, two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. Okay? And a husband and a wife are supposed to be a team unit. Okay? Because we are heirs together of the grace of God. Okay? Verse 10, for if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him that is alone when he falleth, for he hath not another to help him up. Again, if two lie together, then they have heat. But how can one be warm alone? Well, you get yourself some heated blankets and get yourself a night. Right, right, right. And if one prevail against him, two shall withstand him. And the threefold cord is not quickly broken. And some of you would read that who are alone and lonely right now, and that would just tear your heart out, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it? And see, one of the worst things that man and woman could do I believe is when this thing of loneliness, when this thing of, okay, yeah, I'm not alone, you're right, but, you know, who's going to cook, the, who's going to cook, who's going to do the cleaning, that, that's all on me, that's all on me, heirs together of the grace of life, and that's something that cannot be denied, even though we are not alone as saints, we are never alone. As saints. 
And see, also, keep in mind about uh, Rich Man and Lazarus, who in his life, Lazarus suffered many evil things, but when he was, but he went to be in Abraham's bosom. In Abraham's bosom, he was comforted. But the rich man, who had everything at his back, right at his fingertips. It's like yesterday, you know, the, uh, we were talking about, you know, these Hollywood harlots. But yet, they died broken and alone. A lot of them. Well, because they, sold, they sell themselves to the devil for fame and fortune. But see, when, when this thing within you, when loneliness, when that wanting comes around, the worst thing that any of you can do is to turn on this YouTube. Turn on your internet. God forbid you watch a television. You know, like this stuff there. I mean, you know, God forbid. Because Satan will come in there. And your own flesh. Through your own flesh. And give you a superficial. Unrealistic. Thing. Of what your flesh wants. And you're told, you're taught that you can have that. But at what cost? The reality is, people, beg your pardon, any one of you, if you really wanted to, you could go to a one of these filthy bars and get alcohol involved and flirt and do this, that, and the other thing. And you probably could succeed. What's the cost? Deuteronomy 22. Deuteronomy 22. You know, I've, I've never forgot that quote. And I don't know where it came from. I can't remember. But the, what, the quote was, from a male perspective, the loneliest I have ever been is when I was married to my wife. Huh? How can one be married but yet be feeling as lonely and as alone as someone who is. How is that possible? How many of you have read Deuteronomy chapter 22 and you've come to verses 9 on to verse 11 and you're just kind of like, hmm, have you ever considered what this is actually talking about? Deuteronomy 22 verses 9 on to verse 11. Thou shalt not sow thy vineyard with divers seeds, lest the fruit of thy seed which thou hast sown, and the fruit of thy vineyard be defiled. In the book of Malachi, Malachi, talks about, well, let's go there. Let's go there to Malachi. I wish you would have never said that. <laughs> you know who you are. I, I, I remember the day uh, he said that to me. He said, Malachi. I, I, I like laughed so hard I sparkled. Okay. But uh, let me see. Here in Mal Malachi. Okay. Here in Malachi. Verses 14 on to verse 16. Yet ye say, Wherefore? Because the Lord hath been witness between thee and the wife of thy youth, against whom thou hast, against whom thou hast dealt treacherously. Yet she is thy companion and the wife of thy covenant. 
and did not and did not he make one yet had he the residue of the spirit lowercase s one that he imparted and wherefore one that he might seek a godly seed raise up a child in the way he should go and when he is old he will not depart from it Therefore take heed to your spirit, and let none deal treacherously against the wife of his youth. Wife of his youth. For the Lord, the God of Israel, saith that he hateth putting away. For one covereth violence with his garment, saith the Lord of hosts. Therefore take heed to your spirit, that ye deal not treacherously. So, when you come back to Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 9, Thou shalt not sow thy vineyard with diverse seeds, lest the fruit of thy seed which thou hast sown, and the fruit of thy vineyard be defiled. When two opposing things that aren't supposed to be together try to get together. What's the fruit that might come from that? Something that is defiled. Now that's not always the case. It's not always the case, but see, when you try to take two incompatible things and force them to be compatible, you're asking for trouble. Thou shalt not plow with an ox and an ass together. Now that verse ought to be very simple to, uh, to, to discern. Okay? An ox and an ass. Okay? Asses are, <laughs> are usually a lot smaller than an ox. Have you ever seen an ox up close and personal? They're pretty big. Okay? But see, that's the, that's the thing. They're unequal. They're unequal. And when you try to do what? Thou shalt not plow the field with an unequal yoke. Have every, any of you, I'm, some of you have, farming, tried to actually do that? It, it's a mess. It's like the ox will take off and the other one would be here, you know, with two, with one stronger and one weaker. And it's like the, the plow itself will tilt and no, no, no. And verse 11, thou shalt not wear a garment of divers sorts as of woolen and linen together. How many of you will read this and just be like, okay, that's Old Testament. What's being said here? This, this, ought to be inter this ought to be obvious. What's being said here? For our instruction in righteousness and in reality. Genesis 11. Genesis 11. God is a God of distinction. God is a God of distinction. God likes things. Okay, over there. Over there. I'll give you, I'll give you what you need in that little grouping of your thing over there, and you I'll give it to you over there. But see, what happens when those distinctive lines are blurred as Rome is trying to do today? Has done quite successfully. What happens when distinction is blurred? Genesis 11, verses 1 on to verse 9. I know, brother, but remember, you're only as relevant as your la latest video. And like I was saying to Brother Alexander last night, um, unfortunately, beg, beg your pardon, um, I, I, the Lord has given your servant quite a few videos to do, okay? I, 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 I recently looked through, you know, the oldest, and I was like, what was that video about? 
And of course, I was I'm really bad at putting things like in titles or whatnot to tell you what it's about. You know, you you got to click on it, and it's like, what was it? What was that? I I don't even remember what what that video was about. You know, okay. But Genesis 11, pardon that rabbit trail, verses one and verse nine. And the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar. And they dwelt there. Shinar, the land of Nimrod. Babylon. Yeah. 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 Babylon, Egypt, Rome. Ooh. And they said one to another, Go to, let us make brick and burn them thoroughly, thoroughly. And they had brick for stone, and slime had they for mortar. And they said, go to, let us all together as one. Now, be aware, salvifically today, salvifically pertaining to salvation, there is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither white nor black. Okay? There is neither male nor female. What does that mean? Salvifically, today, in this dispensation, we are all one in Christ Jesus. If you are serving the right Jesus, and you came to him his way and not your own. Okay? In salvation, there is no distinction. Apart from that, I'm a Japhetite. There are some of you that are Hamites. There are some of you that are Shemites. Some of you are even Hebrews. Okay? In salvation today, there is no distinction. But apart from salvation, there is still distinction. Like I said, I'm a Japhethite. Okay? I'm a Japhethite. In Christ, we are one. But in this crude matter, there's distinction. And you know what, dear friend? There ain't nothing wrong with that. You know, people say, well, King James Bible is racist. Uh, look up the word race in the authorized version of the scriptures. It's like uh, quick, it's like uh, fast, okay, and quick. You know, they've taken those words and mean it to do with speed. Scripturally, fast and quick has nothing to do with speed. Especially fast, especially fast. There, it has nothing to do with speed. Okay? Alright? Race in scripture has nothing to do with the color of your skin or your kindred. Okay? It doesn't. We ought to be saying kindredists or your kindred. Okay? But God is a God of distinction. There ain't nothing wrong with that. That ain't you being a kindredist. That's the way God designed it. God likes variety. Like I've told you before, if God didn't like variety, how come we don't all have little chihuahuas? Hmm? How come we all don't have just zebras walking around out there? Variety. And distinction within that variety. But Satan, you have God said, let's bring everybody together. And they said, one to another, go to, let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone, and slime had they for mortar. And they said, go to, let us build us. Note the us's here, okay? And they said, go to, let us build us a city and a tower, whose top may reach unto heaven, and let us make us a name that we be scattered abroad, that lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. 
Look at that verse 4. Don't look at me. Look at that verse 4. Us, 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 us. We, we. And what were they doing? Making a tower to reach on to heaven. Ye shall be as gods, no good and evil. I will be like the Most High. Love is love. Love is love, huh? Uh, you have no idea what love is. Love is truth. Love is truth. And Jesus Christ, he is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by him. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men builded. The Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language. This they begin to do. See, when man gets together on a scale such as this, It usually doesn't work out well. It doesn't. Because when fallen man outside of Christ wants to get together, it's to exalt themselves. Or else this is lying. The Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language. And this they begin to do. And now, nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. Have you ever looked into eugenics before? Designer babies? Have you ever looked into that? See, when man gets together, the Lord himself says right there, and now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. Now what has man imagined to do today? Love is love. How many genders are there? Sodomite marriage. You see these sodomite TikToks of this fake thing going on between how beautiful Satan makes these these pretty little boys look together huh have you ever seen any of those hmm. Brad why are you talking about that okay why are you talking about that think about this remember Satan in Ezekiel chapter 28 had all these precious stones upon him and when it comes to sin, doesn't sin look so beautiful? And then when you fall into that trap, especially when Satan is putting the entire world before your eyes in a moment of time, in a weak state, it'll justify just about anything. And it's all fake. It all leads to death. Go to. Let us go down and there confound their language that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of all the earth. And they left off to build the city. They never did. Babylon was not destroyed by God. They just left it. So, man gets together and makes a tower to exalt themselves. The Lord sees that and scatters them. Again, distinction. Distinction. Therefore, the name of the city is called Babel, as I understand it actually should be pronounced. 
because the Lord did there confound the language of all the earth. And from thence did the Lord scatter them abroad upon the face of all the earth. And then, of course, in Deuteronomy 32, verses 7 and 9, on to 9, excuse me. Remember the days of old. Consider the years of many generations. Ask thy father, and he will shew thee. Thy elders, and they will tell thee. When the Most High divided the nations their inheritance, when he separated the sons of Adam, he set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. For the Lord's portion is his people. Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. And then, of course, the New Testament tie-in for this is Acts chapter 17. Acts chapter 17, 26 and 27. Okay. Uh, let me, let, let's read um, 24 on to verse 28 in Acts 17. God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, Dwelleth not in temples made with hands. Not in your little church building. Neither is worshipped with men's hands as though he needed anything Catholic. Seeing he giveth to all life and breath and all things. God doesn't need us. I'll never forget the day that I quit listening to David Wilkerson when he made the statement in one of his sermons that Jesus needs us. That was it. <laughs> okay? I know a lot of people like Mr. David Wilkerson, and David Wilkerson said a lot of good things. He was against TV. He was against corruption, blah, blah, blah. I would not be surprised if we don't see Mr. Wilkerson up there. I would not be surprised. If he's up there, great. But I don't think Mr. Wilkerson would be, will be up there. But hey, we'll find out when we get there. Okay? But yeah. Yeah. R remember! And this is, this is the thing of that irks me of the Catholic. Because Catholics, Catholicism implies to you that God needed them. God don't need us. Okay? But yeah, I heard that. I, I can't remember what sermon it was from David Wilkerson, but he said that in that one sermon. Jesus needs us. Psst, done! I turned off that. I, I had it in my earbuds. It's like, turn it off, deleted it, that's it. I deleted all the things I had of David Wilkerson. Just like, that's it, man. I ain't listening to that no more. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Anyway, verse 26. And hath made of one blood all nations of men, of men for to dwell on all the face of the earth. Uh, one blood. The blood of mankind. Atheist. Okay. Whether you want to believe this or not is irrelevant. We have a common ancestor. Adam and Eve. Not a rock. Not a sniveling piece of snot that came out of the water. No. We have a common ancestor. Adam and Eve. We're all descended of Adam and Eve. Hence, one blood. Okay? Variation in kind, by the way, is not evolution. It's just variation. And hath made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on all the face of the earth and hath determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation. That they should seek the Lord if haply they might feed, feel after him and find him, though he be not very far from every one of us. For in him we live, because you're alive today, because he's allowed it, 
and move and have our being. The light that's in your eyes when you die, that light's not going to be there. Okay, that comes from the Lord. All right. As certain also of your own poets have said, for we are all his offspring. Meaning, you're alive today because the Lord has allowed it. There are no accidents. There are no oopsies. Your father and mother might not have planned. But there are no accidents with God. And shame on you fathers and mothers who would instill in their children that you were an accident. You want to be honest with your child? Fine. But at least put into the equation our Father Jesus Christ. Our son, no, your mother and I, we, we didn't with the intent that you would be here. No, we did not. But see, the Lord intended it. My father, my father, who I love dearly, and I wish I could see him again before I die. Um, he said that to me. He, and even my mother. Well, my, my, my mother was a little different. That, that's not true. My mother, well, she, she you know, wanted me. But my father said, uh, no son, you know, I did not plan. But the Lord did. He actually said that to me. And that's, that puts a different construct on things. Because it shows you from whom you have to do. So that means you ought to consider, it's like, okay, you let me be here. You gave me life. Maybe I should look into it. Okay? Maybe. Maybe. You think? You know? Yeah, I think. But see, this thing about distinction again, big brother. Distinction. The boundaries. And one of the worst things that anybody can do, anybody, not just a saint, is when you're feeling, when this is getting the best of you, when that loneliness, when that pain that won't go away, and you try to circumvent that with something from like a, from online, and then you get a fleeting temporary thing, but it lasts for a moment and then it goes away. And then you're left with the reality that when you're looking around, it's only you. See, we got to be careful. Because, I mean, now, granted, there are brethren out there who don't have this issue. Again, our dear brother from North Dakota, Brother Jeff, he's long given me permission to use his name. He does not have that problem, and he's a single man. Okay? I, I admire our brother for that. Uh, because he's like, <laughs> no, dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, that's... Been there, done that. I, I don't need that. You know, he's resolved within himself, you know, that is like, okay, that's... <laughs> I wish I had that. <laughs> it would be a lot easier sometimes, wouldn't it, brethren? Wouldn't it? For some of you brethren who are uh, alone and single, too, wouldn't it be nice if you could be like Brother Jeff in that way, who doesn't have any necessity? Wouldn't it? But see, what can happen is when we get so low and then we get angry and we get bitter, then you ask the questions like, how come, and then see, but think about this, the, the old fashioned, how come all these women are going after these guys who treat them like garbage? Why is that? We're not going to get into that in this video because that's a whole other topic. It has something to do with, uh, in Genesis, the curse. He shall rule over you. 
has something to do with that. But see, I believe that the premise of us asking that is incorrect. Why? Because we are judging with the visual stimuli. Think about this. I, pr I praise the Lord that he has let me able to see. Praise the Lord that he has allowed some of you, most of you, to have sight. What if you didn't have sight and you didn't judge by your eyes? Sometimes I wish I were deaf and blind. When the visual stimuli isn't there, you have to judge upon a whole different criteria. And it's undeniable that the visual stimuli in this equation is a part of it. But see, if you take that out, then you would be judging more on what? We walk by faith and not by sight. And see, see, when we as man and woman start to get that loneliness, that burning, it's the visual stimuli that gets us, gets us every time, isn't it? Because in uh, 1 John chapter 2 again, verses 15 on to verse 17, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world, if any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh. And the lust of the eyes. Brother, sister, the worst thing that we can do is when we're getting, when we're feeling lonely, when you're feeling deprived, when, when you feel like a stranger in your own home, when the one that you have said, I do, and you're supposed to be one unit, feels like they're on Mars and you're here on Earth. The worst thing we can do is to give in to our eyes by, by going, uh, getting one of these things and start uh, trying to pass the time, going to the devil. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Again, you look at some of these disgusting, grotesque, um, they're called TikToks, but on YouTube they're the little shorts, of these fake wrestling angle theater performance things of these couples okay with these perfectly looking people who have no blemishes women who are shaped like whatever and the worst thing that you can do is to look at that especially when this is getting the best of us But see, this thing about distinction. And see, when Satan is being allowed, usually by your behest too, don't forget that, to dangle that thing in front of your eyes, then what? You consider compromise. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 12 on to verse 18. 2 Corinthians 6, excuse me, 14 on to verse 18. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness, and what communion hath light with darkness? Now, there are those out there, and I, I've, I've fell for this for a while myself, but people will like to, when it comes to this, it's like, well, that's talking about fellowship between brethren and stuff like that. It, it's not in a construct of marriage. Man shall leave his father and mother and be joined unto his wife and they twain shall be one flesh. What 
other thing of fellowship is more intimate than a husband and wife. Okay. To say that this has no application in marriage is ridiculous. I for a while thought that myself. But you know when you put two and two together and you look at it, it's like what what better bond of fellowship is between a husband and wife? Right? Now, this obviously does encompass fellowship of brethren. <laughs> obviously. <laughs> obviously. But to say that it doesn't at all encompass that which is between man and wife, that's crazy. And what concord hath Christ with Belial, or Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God, as God hath said, I will dwell in them, and walk in them, and I will be their God. They shall be my people. I've heard of people who have so lacking for fellowship that they compromise and like go to a church building and then they come around and it's like, man, I wish I wouldn't have gone to that. Yeah, what fellowship hath light with darkness? Construct now of I haven't been with a woman in years. I'm so lonely. I just I, I I hate this loneliness. And you and the worst thing you do, you turn on YouTube or what Instagram if any of you mess with that. And you look at these things and then the devil you know, puts that uh, puts that in front of you. But see, you made the choice to go and look at it. And then once you start looking, man, then you start to fantasize and then you start to you start to fall into the trap of the grandeur of this unreal thing that you're being fed about these perfectly looking people who have this perfectly little thing but the minute they turn see they're acting they're acting what what are these people like when the cameras are off are they that giddy that mushy gushy huh Very cosmetic. Very cosmetic. But, you know, the makeup washes off. And then you're just left with the person, spirit, soul, and body. And again, what if you couldn't see? And you had to, and you had to, judge on an entirely different criteria. I, I, I praise the Lord that he's allowed me to see and that you can see too, but you know, I forget which one who said it. It was a hymnist who said, who was blind. It was a female blind from birth and she said something around the lines, the very first thing I'm ever going to see is the face of our Lord Jesus Christ in heaven. Imagine that. The very first thing that you're ever going to be able to actually see is the Lord Jesus Christ. I, I think about that kind of stuff, you know. It's like if you, if you had a blinder on your eye, or on your eyes, you know, and you couldn't see, and the, the visual stimuli was taken out of the equation, and you had to judge upon a different criteria than which is so easily to do with the visual stimuli. Wherefore, verse 17, come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing and I will receive you. And I will be a father unto you. And ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. And Ecclesiastes 7. Ecclesiastes 7. Verses 
23 unto the close. All this have I proved by wisdom. I said, I will be wise, but it was far from me. Solomon, of course, who messed up his entire life by, because why? He loved many strange women. You read in Deuteronomy chapter 17, I believe it is, the warning about how he's not supposed to go back to Egypt. Solomon did that and married many strange wives. Now these wives were loyal to him, yes, and that, but they turned away his heart. There's a lot of things we can learn not to do from Solomon. That's why I appreciate and love Solomon. I think, personally, Solomon is up there. If some of you disagree with me. We'll find out when we get there. But let's continue. That which is far off and exceeding deep, who can find it? I applied mine heart to know and to search and to seek out wisdom, the fear of the Lord and the reason of things, and the wickedness of folly, even of foolishness and madness. And I find more bitter than death the woman whose heart is snares and nets, and her hands as bands. Whoso pleaseth God shall escape from her, but the sinner shall be taken. Now, there are those of you sisters who might be getting offended a little, Woman of God, the two-part video will be in the description box for you to consider, okay? All right, watch that, dear saints, dear sisters, okay? Behold, this have I found, Seth the preacher, counting one by one to find out the account, which yet my soul seeketh, but I find not. One man among a thousand have I found, but a woman among all those have I not found. How does Satan destroy the family? He goes after the woman. Look in the Garden of Eden. Where was Adam? Where did, who did Satan go after? Eve. I have encountered people who have tried to use this very verse to justify sodomy. You're like, Brad. Dude, when it comes to just as if I, okay, <laughs> when it comes to just as if I, okay, the level of depravity of man to justify anything is astounding. But a woman among all those have I not found. Lo, this only have I found, that God hath made man upright, but they have sought out many inventions. And today, especially in this American culture of ours, the pornography thing and the sexualization of um, uh, on the televisions and the commercials and, you know, little 12-year-old girls walking around like they're little whores and whatnot, dressed like that. And with the whole gender thing, the whole uh, the whole base of feminism has been demolished. It's like the old-fashioned feminists today are have been defeated by what? The gender thing. It's it's laughable, but at the same time, it's like wow. But see, here's the thing. You're more likely to find a true saint who is a man out there for fellowship than what? Proverbs 31, 29 on verse 31. Many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excellest them all. Favor is deceitful. All this will I give unto you. If you fall down and worship me, all shall be thine. And beauty is vain. Yet, 
thou shalt be brought down to the sides of the pit. Satan, beauty is vain with all those precious stones and coverings and all oh, the bright light. It looks so beautiful. And then Amon and Tamar, he lusted after his half-sister or cousin, whatever it was. It was his half-sister, excuse me. What happens? His lust got so bad, he wanted her, he forced her, and then what happened? He hated her. Be careful what you wish for. You might just get it. And see, if you didn't have eyes to see the visual stimuli, You know, that, that this, this sagging skin suit, you kids, you youngins out there, the glory in your flesh, if you make it to 50, if you make it to 60. Oh yeah, you can be a Joan Rivers who was nothing but plastic in the face. But the reality is, it sags. Your little barbed wire tattoo will be a picket fence. And what is being promoted to you on YouTube. Thin is in. Youth is king. All these 20 somethings. Favor is deceitful. And beauty is vain. But a woman that feareth the Lord. She shall be praised. Give her the fruit of her hand. Let her own works praise her in the gates. A They're out there! Where? I don't know, brother. I don't know. I don't know. They're out there. Truly saved woman who fears the Lord. I know of several actually. A couple here in America. One special uh, daughter in uh, over in England. But see how precious and how rare. Why? Because Satan levels everything at you, woman. He does. So, a woman that fears the Lord, a woman who is a saint, you have a treasure. But where are they? And hey, you sisters, about a godly man, one who is a true saint, one who isn't in league with, league with these phallus houses. Someone who isn't cosmetic. You rightfully say. Well, Brad, where are they? Where are they? Oh, and by the way, brethren, please, stay away from these Christian dating things. Are you, are you, have you ever looked into those? I, I a while ago, a while ago, uh, I thought the Lord was going to have me to do a video exposing that kind of nonsense. You're going to mess around with something like that? You're better off, you're better off looking at pornography. You're better off looking at pornography than going to one of these Christian dating things. You're better off. Stay away from them. You're not going to find a godly woman on uh, a dating thing. You're not going to find a godly man on one of them either. Okay? Oh, you'll find Christians? Good Lord. But a saint? A saint has better sense than that. Out of desperation, maybe. Oh. 
Proverbs 6. Proverbs 6. Verses 25 on to verse 26. And remember, and see, the visual stimuli thing. Lust not after her beauty in thine heart, neither let her take thee with her eyelids. For by means of a horse, woman, a man is brought to a piece of bread, and the adulteress will hunt for the precious life. On YouTube, I've, I've seen these advertisements for... Well, I'm a Christian, and I got tired of it. And they show you this cosmetic-looking little teeny bopper girl who is like the epitome of visual stimuli beauty. It's fake! If we didn't have the hindrance sometimes of visual stimuli, how much more real, how much more deeper could things be for us as saints? Now, I'm not saying about go gouge out your eyes. I'm just saying. Okay? The Lord has gifted us, given us the ability, the privilege, the blessing to be able to see the sun, to see the grass, to see the beauty that he has made. Amen, amen, amen. But see, when it comes to companionship, Sometimes, brethren, these can be a deterrent. Because like I've said to you before, I've seen things, man. I, I've seen just gorgeous, knock-out women who are like, wow. But on the inside, ugly. I would rather, I would rather, it's like Leah and um, Rachel. Rachel was beautiful, well-favored, but Leah was tender to her. Scripture was telling us that Leah was not as good-looking as Rachel. But then again, who birthed Judah? Who of Israel's wives gave uh, gave the more? I would rather have a woman who on the inside had that fear of the Lord which is likened in Scripture unto the beauty of a woman. I would rather have that on the inside than have the most dynamite looking woman. Because if the inside is filled with the fear of the Lord, and the fear of the Lord, you you read, we've talked about this in length, at length. The fear of the Lord is likened unto the beauty of a woman. And if that is on the inside, What's the outside in comparison to the beauty that is on the inside? But what happens now? We're going we're gonna to shift here. What happens when you find someone and you get someone, but yet you're not equally yoked? What happens? What happens... If you fall for someone, you get married, there's food, you have food and raiment, you got a roof over your head, which is a luxury, you have all these things. But yet, and I've 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 talked to several brethren about this, several. And I've I've uh, had a chance to hear several testimonies of these things. About okay, you you're living with a husband provides for you, who takes care of you, but yet you're strangers. You have a roof over your head, you have everything you want. But that melting, that fellowship between husband and wife, the, the heart string, the twain one flesh. See, 
Twain becoming one flesh, yes, it encompasses the sexual nature. Yes, it does. But it more so encompasses being one flesh because you have one father. What happens when you're in a, in a situation where the things like your food and raiment, things like that, are, you know, roof, the, the physical things, the temporal things are there. But the things for your spiritual and your emotional things aren't. Proverbs 15, verses 13 on to verse 18. A merry heart, 13 on to verse 18 in Proverbs 15. A merry heart maketh a cheerful countenance, but by, but by sorrow of the heart the spirit is broken. The heart of him that hath understanding departing from evil seeketh knowledge, but the mouth of fools feedeth on foolishness. All the days of the afflicted are evil, but he that hath a merry heart hath a continual feast. Right here. Better is a little with the fear of the Lord than great treasure and trouble therewith. Better is a little with the fear of the Lord than great treasure and trouble therewith. I talked to the one dude who's wealthy, who's married. His wife gives him everything. But in heart, they don't have the same father. And these are the and this was an individual who, while married, while married, supposedly came to the Lord. He did, she didn't. Okay? And we're going to look at this, uh, Lord willing. Um, 1 Corinthians 7 does not give license for a saved man or woman to marry someone who is lost. It doesn't. The context is about two that are already married and the Lord comes in. It not, does not give license for you, a saved man or woman, to go and marry a lost individual. It doesn't work that way. Better is a dinner of herbs where love is than a stalled ox and hatred therewith. A wrathful man stirreth up strife, but he that is slow to anger appeases strife. Look at that verse 17. I, I'd rather be with a woman who fears the Lord and you have nothing but see, you have the same Father that you are truly one flesh. Not just in the bed, but in every ounce of the makeup of being one flesh. But what happens when you, you know, your food and raiment is there? You have a, what is that? A stalled ox. But hatred therewith. Some of you know what I'm talking about, don't you? Don't you? Psalm 106. Psalm 106. Psalm 106. Verses 13 on to verse 15. They soon forget his works. They, wa they waited not for his counsel. They waited not for his counsel. Don't look at me. Look at that verse. They waited not for his counsel. But lusted exceedingly in the wilderness and tempted God in the desert. And he gave them their request. But sent leanness into their soul. Careful what you wish for. might get it. You might get that 
fine looking woman. Who cooked for you? Who cleaned for you? Might even, in the bed, even do. But do you truly have the same father? No, if, you, if your father is Satan, hey, don't worry about it, huh? <laughs> if you're a saint, He gave them their request, but sent leanness into their soul. And see, again, when the loneliness, when you look around, yes, you're not alone, but physically you are. Physically you are. Again, the worst thing you can do is to get on this YouTube um, internet thing and start to peruse. You know, unless personally I got something to do, I make sure I stay away from YouTube. I really do. <laughs> I really do. You know, uh, I keep the phone in here, <laughs> okay, and do my thing. I, I, I work at distancing. There's a time and place for everything. There's a season, you know, uh, for everything under the heaven. There's a time and a place for it, okay? And I, I try to distance myself. Why? I don't want to get caught up in anything. And it's easy to do, man. It's easy to do. It's really easy to do. Uh, I, I'm writing something down, I'm sorry. It's very easy to do, you know? You look at something online or something, or when I'm talking to a brother or sister, uh, uh, not sister, excuse me, but a brother, and uh, I'll be looking at my phone, and it's like, wow, I see my notifications or something, or emails, it's like, oh, wow. And you get led away. We have to be, we have to be on guard, like the Lord says, you know, if your eye offend thee, pluck it out. He's not talking about mutilation. He's talking about, Psalm 101, verses 3 and 4. I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. I hate the work of them that turn aside. It shall not cleave to me. A forward heart shall depart from me. I will not know a wicked person. You know, any one of you say, well, this, you know, watching TV or listening to this song. I can remember th songs that I heard when I was 18. And I'm almost 50. I can remember Hollywood movies that I saw once when I was in my early 20s in my 50, when I'm almost 50. Don't tell me. That. Don't, don't, don't fall for that. Don't cleave to you, man. And I'll tell you what, brother, sister, when that loneliness when that loneliness comes at you. Yeah, you're not alone. you got the Lord in it with you. Yes, you do. You're a saint. You're saved. The Lord's with you 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. <laughs> the Lord's hardly going to do your dishes, right? <laughs> yes, the Lord was the feet of the apostles. Yes, he did. But, what, the Lord's going to be in the kitchen cooking you a meal, right? <laughs> You're to serve him. But he provides for you. And see, when this appetite of man, it's there in women too, but come on. Even you sisters are like, <laughs> yeah, Brad, you're right. It's more pro pronounced than a man. Even though a woman can be just as lustful, just as burning as a man can. Don't, don't. Don't fall for that. That's not in women at all. That that's that's horse pucky. Okay, <laughs> no, <laughs> no. It's it's not as common as it is in a man, but it's there as well. Don't don't fall for that. Okay. Proverbs twenty three, verses one on to verse nine. 
When thou sittest to eat with a ruler, consider diligently what is before thee, and put a knife to thy throat, if thou be a man given to appetite. And if you're given to appetite, that, that talks about maybe being a little gluttonous, but when you're hungry, you're hungry, right? And here's, here's, here's the thing. Be not desirous of his dainties, for they are deceitful meats. These, these disgusting things that you see online, that these fake cosmetic little TV programmy thingies that last for barely a minute. Arrgh! Labor not to be rich. Cease from thine own wisdom. Wilt thou set thine eyes upon that which is not? For riches certainly make themselves wings. They fly away as an eagle toward heaven. Eat not the bread of him that hath an evil eye. Neither desire thou his dainty meats. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. As he thinketh in his heart, so is he. I'm saved because I think I'm saved. I just believe I am saved. You are because you say you are, huh? Or, I will be like the Most High. I will, I will, I will, I will, I will. You shall be as gods. Eat and drink, saith he to thee. But his heart is not with thee. Better is a dinner of herbs where love is than a stalled ox and hatred therewith. And very quickly, Psalm 55, Psalm 55, 16. On to 23. To close. As for me. I will call upon God. And the Lord shall save me. Evening and morning and at noon will I pray. And cry aloud. And he shall hear my voice. He hath delivered my, he hath delivered my soul in peace. From the battle that was against me. For there were many with me. God shall hear and afflict them, even he that abideth of old. That old serpent, maybe? Selah. Because they have no changes, therefore they fear not God. Oh, they can change their outer appearance, but are they truly new creatures? He hath put forth his hands against such as be at peace with him. He hath broken his covenant. The words of his mouth were smoother than butter, but war was in his heart. His words were softer than oil, yet were they drawn swords. Cast thy burden upon the Lord, and he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. But thou, O God, shalt bring them down into the pit of destruction, Bloody and deceitful men shall not shall not live out half their days, but I will trust in thee. Go back to Proverbs 23, verse 8. The morsel which thou hast eaten shalt thou vomit up and lose thy sweet words. Better is a dinner of herbs where love is than a stalled ox and hatred therewith. Be very careful. Be very careful. <laughs> Be very careful of what you're willing to justify, to satisfy. Be very careful at what you're willing to justify in order to satisfy. Psalm 
Speak not in the ears of a fool who says in his heart there is no God. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. For he will despise the wisdom of thy words. Now, 1 Corinthians chapter 7. 1 Corinthians chapter 7. Verses 1 on verse 13. Now concerning the things whereof ye wrote unto me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife and every woman her have her own husband. We already looked at Malachi, Malachi about the godly seed. There is more to a marriage than just that. But one of thee, one of thee, one of thee big reasons is why to avoid fornication. But see, if you get into a marriage where that is there, but yet eat and drink, but their hearts aren't with you, Let the husband render unto the wife due benevolence, and likewise also the wife unto the husband. The wife hath not power of her own body, but the husband. And likewise also the husband hath not power over his own body, but the wife. And see, here's another thing too about the Catholic says, well, Mary was a virgin, a perpetual virgin. Virgin. If Mary, she wasn't, she had several children with Joseph, okay? Um, yeah, Catholic, that's, that's a ridiculous argument. That's easy to be, uh, you know, disproved just like that. But if Mary were, and your Mary is the Queen of Heaven, Semiramis, okay, Diana of the Ephesians, anyway. But if the Mary of Scripture withheld herself from her husband, she would be in sin. Verse 5. Defraud ye not one another, except it be with consent for a time, that ye may give yourselves to fasting and prayer, and come together again, that Satan tempt you not for your incontinency. Okay? Alright? Now look at verse 5. Fasting and prayer. Two saints, male and female, one flesh in the Lord, but also right there, one flesh right there. See. See, it begins with having the same Father. That you are truly one flesh. Because you can, you can yeah, be one flesh there. there. There's a bed right there. Okay? But are you truly one flesh in the Lord? Lest, and, okay, defraud ye not one another, except it be with consent for time. And what happens? When you're unequally yoked with someone, hmm, and this becomes a weapon, a tool, oh, dear brother, that ye may give yourselves to fasting and prayer and come together again, that Satan tempt you not for your incontinence. Hmm. But I speak this by permission and not commandment. For I would that all men were even as myself. Paul, according to this, didn't have that burning. Kind of like our brother Jeff. He's like, <laughs> Good, that, that's okay. Okay? Paul didn't struggle with that. Like I would. Like several of you would. Okay? There are men out there like that. Okay? And we talked about this with uh, the refuting uh, stupid head 
I forget her name, Christy Burke or whatever. Uh, I'm going to put that one because she says Paul was against marriage. Uh, no, he wasn't. He didn't stoop with that. <laughs> okay. Uh, that video will be in the description box. But every man hath his proper gift of God. One after this manner, another after that manner. And you can tie in where the Lord said, uh, some men are made eunuchs for the kingdom of heaven. You know, and some have his proper gift from God and that kind of stuff like that. Okay? There are men out there, and even women, who don't have that necessity. The worst thing I think you could do is when one who burns and one who doesn't are put together. That's a disaster waiting to happen. I say, therefore, to the unmarried and widows, it's good for them to, it's good, it is good for them to abide even as I am. But if they cannot contain, let them marry, for it is better to marry than to burn. So, to quench the burning, I'm going to run out and marry a Christian who isn't really a saint and get messed up with someone I should never be yoked with, right? Why? Because I burn. And see, incontinency can't hold water. That's when you got to be on guard, brother, sister. That's when you got to be on guard because it's easy to do. It's easy to get led away, isn't it? And unto the married I command, yet not I, but the Lord. <clears throat> Let not the wife depart from her husband. But And if she depart, let her remain unmarried. Or be reconciled to her husband. And let not the husband put away his wife. Okay. Look, if you're in a relationship, if you're marriage, in a relationship with a man, sisters, and he's beating the snot out of you. Um, okay. Catholics, I, I've heard this, uh, will say, well, you got to stay with him. But he's beating the snot out of you. He's beating you as if he were, uh, if you were an opponent in the octagon. Okay, I remember I saw that before with the guy doing overhand rights to his wife. Okay, I, I wasn't the one that ha I didn't because uh, the other guys <laughs> tackled him uh, before I could because I would have. Okay, a, guy, a grown man doing an overhand right. And why? Why? Because she didn't cook his meal right. Or interrupted him. Or gave him a cold hot pocket. And see, Christianity said, well, don't, don't leave him. Hmm. Anyway. But, and if she, verse 11. But, and if she depart, let her remain unmarried, or be reconciled to her husband. Let not the husband put away his wife. But to the rest speak I, not the Lord. If any brother hath a wife that believeth not, You're going, you're going to see this. I know you are, brother. I love you. You're a free man. You're a free man. In the eyes of the Lord. But to the rest speak I, not the Lord. If any brother hath a wife that believeth not, and she be pleased to dwell with him, let him not put her away. And the woman which hath an husband that believeth not, and if he be pleased to dwell with her, let her not him, let her not leave him. 
Let's read the verse 15. For the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife, and the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband. Else were your children unclean, but now are they holy. Now again, this is not talking about a saved man or woman going off and getting shacked up with someone who's lost. No, context. This is talking about two lost people, the Lord comes in, and the Lord saves either or or both. Okay? That's what this is talking about. This is not giving license for a saved man, saved woman, because they're burning, to go get married to a lost man or a lost woman. It's not. It's not. But you were married as lost people. The Lord saves you. But the other isn't. But if the unbelieving depart, let him or her depart. A brother or sister is not under bondage in such cases. But God hath called us to peace. Now you are free. Psalm 73. Psalm 73. We're almost done. Like I said, this I, I don't know how this is going to go. I don't know how you're going to receive this. But because the sooner, the more closer we get to the redemption of the purchased possession and just the bombardment that happens from Satan and all the perversion, it's just getting worse and worse. And those who do not have anyone in the flesh, it gets worse. Brad, you're married. You're right. You're right. I am. But there was a time when I wasn't. Psalm 73, 23, on the verse 28. Nevertheless, I am continually with thee. Thou hast holden me by my right hand. Thou shalt guide me with thy counsel, and afterward receive me to glory. Whom have I in heaven but thee? And there is none upon earth that I desire beside thee. My flesh and my heart faileth, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. For lo, they that are far from thee shall perish. Thou hast destroyed all them that go a-whoring from thee. But it is good for me to draw near to God. I have put my trust in the Lord God that I may declare all thy works. Deuteronomy 31, just one verse, verse 6. Be strong and of a good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he, he it is that doth go with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. But yes, you're right. <laughs> God forbid, what's the Lord going to do your dishes? You're right. You're right. You're right. That's undisputable. You're right. Hebrews 13, 4 and verse 6. Marriage is honorable in all, and the bed undefiled. But whoremongers and adulterers God will judge. Let your conversation be without covetousness, and be content with such things as ye have. Better is a dinner of herbs where love is than a stalled ox and hatred therewith. I hope, I, I hope that came out that when we were talking about that. I hope you got what hopefully was trying to get across. I hope so. Okay. 
and be content with such things as ye have. For he said, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee, that we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper. I will not fear what man shall do unto me. Better you have a woman that fear, fear the Lord and a man that fear the Lord, and you have just like ramen <laughs> or whatever, than you be with someone who you're unequally yoked with, and yet you have everything at your beck, but yet their heart is not with thee. And I have talked with many of you who are in that state. Second Timothy chapter 4. Second Timothy chapter 4, verses 16 on to verse 18. At my first answer, no man stood with me, but all men forsook me. I pray God that it may not be laid to their charge. Notwithstanding, the Lord stood with me and strengthened me, that by me the preaching might be fully known, and that all the Gentiles might hear, and I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. And the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work, and will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. That is going to be it for this little video. Like I said, um, this, this, this is a, a subject that I'm leery of touching on because even though I have experience in the perspective before time, today it isn't. I get that. But there again, I'm called to talk to you about things like and I, I hope that I was able to articulate it so you could I, I mean I believe the scriptures speak for themselves of what we were getting at and of course I trip over my own tongue most of the times but I, I, I hope I hope this helps some of you one of you I hope and that the Lord be glorified because yes you're saved you're a saint you're not alone. But I don't see no one. I get that. I get that. I get that. And believe me, I understand the burning probably better than some of you do. That's going to be it for this little video. I, I, I hope I hope some of you don't take this at all in the wrong way. That's not what the intent was. I just had to share this with you. So, thank you for watching this. If you do, I love you. I'll see you in the next video.